This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. That's me, and the name of the show is in white. It's the Ramble, and we're here until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, there he is. Look at me. There he is, Stephen Kravitz. Look at me, hey, Stephen. Alex. Look at yeah, me. Yeah, you look like you got beat up. I got beat up by a uh, ophthalmic uh, surgeon. What exactly did they do? What they did is they took the um, lids upper lid and bottom lids and they lifted them the upper ones okay. and then tightened up the bottom because what was happening was I was like you know I was like this all the time right all right and so only half my pupil was exposed and so it was harder for me to see if I wanted to like uh, uh, watch television I'd have to you know open my eyes like this right so right. now I don't have to do that it's all been lifted for me so did it hurt uh, it was not pleasant because what happened was they um, um, they had to they couldn't use full anesthesia on me because he needed me to be able to tell him or to respond to him like raise your eyes up raise you put your eyes down raise them up down up down so I was only partially sedated. So when he did like the uh, the uh, injections of the dulling substance for my eyelids, I felt it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't yeah, yeah, it wasn't yeah, terribly yeah. painful, but I felt it. And uh, then he said, "Okay, we're going to do your bottom lids now." He said, "We can give you more anesthesia," and uh, I didn't feel anything more. You know? Oh, okay. Now, come on, I want to get high. Give me a break, you know? Right, 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 right. Now, now, did they give you any medicine to go home with? Oh, yeah. Well, they gave, they gave me stuff to put on my eyes to, you know, uh, right. to some salve to kind of like, you know, uh, heal the the scars and so on. So right, 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 right. And then uh, he uh, gave me, uh, uh, let me see here, what else? Oh, yeah, some antibiotic that I put in my eye. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah. And then, uh, oh, then I had to take prednisone, which is a steroid, which I guess okay. keeps inflammation from happening. I don't know what that was for. And then for pain, you know, you say, okay, what did you give me for pain? You know, and they used to give you a handful of Vicodin. You know, here, right. here, go right, home, right, have, right. have fun, stay high, don't hurt. All right? Right. Uh, well, you can take Tylenol. What? Right. I can take right, th what? right, right. Get out your script pad. I can take fucking Tylenol. Are you out of your fucking goddamn mind? I want right. some. If I'm doing this, if I'm, if, if we're spending thousands upon thousands of dollars for this, the one thing right. I want are decent drugs for crying out loud. I want opioids. Oh yeah, I mean, it just hit me up, doctor. You know. Did he give you any? No. Oh, the bastard. No. Oh, no. the bastard. I went home with a handful of Tylenol. Oh, the bastard. You know, they didn't even ask me if I had Tylenol at home. Right. Luckily, I do. I have it over here. But anyway, so... Oh, and then, I'll tell you, this is the best part. Okay, here's the uh, here's the antibiotic I put in my eyes. Right. Mm -hmm. How much do you think that cost? 60 bucks. Try 80. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, I went... I went on to um, uh, Costco. I got this from my local pharmacy, right? Where I have right. my, where they, where they have my, what do you call it? My uh, insurance. Right. So part of this was paying off my yearly deductible. Oh, really? Yeah. So if I hadn't gone there and I'd gone over to Costco to get it, told them to, you know, call it into Costco, which I just could walk over to Costco, but it's a, it's a longer way than my, Pharmacy, okay. When you're right. when you're sick, when you're ill, you just came back from surgery. The last thing you want, you know, is uh, to walk extra extra it, it, yards. You have to walk all the way across town, or take right? You don't want to go further. Yeah, exactly. 
You so, just want to go to bed. Right. So if I had gone there, this would have been thirteen dollars and ninety nine cents. Well, without insurance. Really? Yes. Go figure that one. I, 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 I'm not that smart. You know, none of this makes any sense whatsoever to me. Right, right. Nor me. And then, I'm surprised they didn't give you a handful of Percocets. Huh? Well, I mean... A handful of Percocets. Yeah, I mean, give me something just to... Hey, here's a little, little prize for you. Here's You've been a good boy. Here's your candy. Right, right, you right, know? right, right. But they didn't do that. So anyway, nah. I, I have been off the air because this was really, really black and blue for a while. Right. And now it's easing up and I'm getting my regular bags back. I was afraid that the bags were going to be lower than they were, but it'll be minus this here. So I'm back to my right. other bags. Okay. If I wanted to get the bags done, that's, that's cosmetic surgery and not covered by Medicare. Right, 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 right. So he right. could do it at the same time for four thousand dollars because he doesn't have to bring in a, a new anesthesiologist. That's crazy. And I told him no. You know, I can live right. with the bags. I mean, they're not terrible. You no, know? they look more terrible to me when the eyes weren't open more. You know, they accented it more. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, you know, what the hell? You know, and I, right. I, at my age, you know, I'm eighty-one. Uh, in case people didn't know, I'm 81. Right, uh, right, right, right. Uh, uh, I figured I'm going to get this all this cosmetic procedures done, and then I'm only going to be alive for maybe a year, you know, two years, or oh. maybe I'll be alive for t for 20 years. But by then, right. the whole face, rest of the face, will have fallen. So you know, it won't matter. Uh, and and I also figured if I'm going out for like uh, I don't know a movie role or something. I'm going out for a person my age. Right, 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 and, and right. I don't yeah, want to look. For a I don't want to look too good for my age. <laughs> you you know. don't have to worry about that. But let's talk about you. What about me? Let's talk because I'm noticing the tooth is still missing. Right. right. I seen the dentist on the 19th. For what? The oral surgeon. And what is he going to do? He's going to pull out the bottom teeth. All the bottom teeth? Yes. And, and and the reason is? They're gone. They're rotted away. They they don't want to be with you anymore. No, they don't. They're abandoning ship. Yeah. They're leaving they're leaving they're leaving their, their country. So they'll remove all of those. Right. And then what are they gonna do in its place? Dentures. Dentures? Yeah. Right. Uh how about an imp how about implants? Medicare doesn't cover it. Medicare does. Oh, Medicare! You're under Medicare for this. Right, right, right. Why? Because it's a, it's a, uh, a yeah. And they consider that cosmetic. Well, I got um, Medicare Advantage, so I now have dental and vision, as well as just regular Medicare. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I wish I could get implants. To tell you the truth. Yeah, well, what happens is with a denture, they would take a denture, they make a denture, then they put two right. implants in, and then they right. screw that to the imp to the uh, the thing. Right. And I would just think that that would be, well, I wish you could afford it. That would be the, the right, way me to, too. It would be the way to go. Absolutely. And, and by Absolutely. the way, you can still go that way eventually. If suddenly you come into thousands and thousands of dollars. Right, knock on wood. They can just still do the implants and the dentures. Oh sure, you know. sure, sure, sure. But anyway, so, so you made it to so, you made it to denture land before me, huh? Yeah, I guess so. What was well, it? Well, I, I I beat myself up a little bit more than you. But this was a drug caused by drugs. Oh, I believe so. Yes. Yeah. And you know, when you when you're doing drugs, you're not really taking care of yourself. Well, that's first of all, but I think that the, also the, the, some of those drugs do something to the teeth or whatever. Right, 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 yeah. right. I think meth really rots out the teeth. It, 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 um, it has something to do with softening the enamel. Oh, really? Right, methamphetamine. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. <laughs> yeah, like, you ever seen anybody with like teeth like chiclets, black chiclets? Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a meth head. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So, oh boy! So I guess you didn't watch the Yankees Red Sox game, did you? 
the Yankees Red Sox. That uh, was uh, la- uh, last night. A, a Yankee is a what? Is it a baseball player, right? Yes, sir. And a Red Sox is a football player. No, it's a baseball oh, player. Oh, okay. It, it was a baseball what game, Alex. Wouldn't, wouldn't it be fun to see football players playing against baseball players? Each, 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 pl- each playing their own game while they're out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be very No, I didn't watch the Yankees versus the Red Sox, but of course that would be an important game for you and I to watch because I'm in New York, Yankees. Right. We're in Boston, near Boston. Right. Uh, Red, Red Sox. Sox. No, I didn't. That's right. Who won? Red Sox. Mm-hmm. Eliminated the Yankees from the postseason. Really? Yep. Hmm. Okay. That was the end of this year. A one-game playoff. So, in other words, this was for like what was this for? If they, the person who won, gets to go to what? Gets to go to the ALDS, the American League Divisional Series. Okay, so then the winner of that goes to the World Series, right? No, it goes to the. Uh, oh God, it's it's it not. Goes to the pennant. Hey, it's October already. It's not over yet. No, 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 October baseball. Do you remember a time when baseball was over by now? No, it would never. It was always in October. The World Series. The World Series, but is the World Series right. going to be this month? I believe so. Oh really? Oh, okay. I don't know, I just... You, you, you don't care. Let's be honest, you don't care. You don't give a shit. I I do give a shit. Oh, do you? Kind of. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right, and I'm my own aunt. And you're your own aunt. Oh, by the way, right. for, for people who were tuning in when we play this, and I told him what happened with my face and the uh, operation, if you've heard it before, because I probably have talked about it already... Right. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, but I don't mind if I repeat myself. Okay. So, anyway. Well. Yeah, yeah. By the way, I got to tell you, uh, I went to Mount Sinai's Eye and Ear Infirmary, is where the operation was. Right. Okay. So everybody in there was for something for eye or ears. Right. Okay. And uh, I went there. They had me there at six thirty in the morning. Okay. And they keep asking me the same questions they've asked me every time at Mount Sinai, because it's part of Mount Sinai. Right. The same questions they always ask me before an, of oper- course. Before an operation. Now, wait a minute. Of course. They have all that information. It's been asked of me before. Why don't they, and I asked them, why don't you coordinate your stuff with the other Mount Sinai's? And they said, we aren't, haven't done that yet. I'm going, what year is this? Right, and they also want to make sure nothing has changed. No, so you know they're going to ask. They're going to ask you those questions no, no, every no, no, time, no, no. Alex. That that was the health part of it. Okay, I'm talking about just the sign in. Right, 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 right. You know, I mean, uh, why don't they just say is your address is still such and such? Uh, you're so and so, such and such an age. Good, thank you. But right. now I have to refill everything out over again. You know, I should have a barcode on my ass. <laughs> Are you one of those yeah, one, of, one of those QR codes? Across the, uh, yeah, uh, I can see you sliding it across the uh, scanner. Yeah, but a QR code on my ass that has all the information. And you do know that day's coming. Well, I don't know about on your ass. It might be on your forearm. Well, be like here. Yeah, right. Right. You know. Like the Jews in Auschwitz. And then I can protest against it because I say I'm a Jew and I want to be buried in a Jewish cemetery. You know, when I got my, when I had my prostate. Alex, you can be buried in a Jewish cemetery with tattoos. You can? Yes. Where did where, 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 you find that at? What Jew did you talk to about that? I spoke to a couple of rabbis. Really? Yeah. And why is that okay? Because I guess the rabbis in Israel noticed that all the millenniums were all tattooed. I see. So they kind of said, you know, we'll let it go. Well, here's what happened. When I went to, uh, uh, when I was getting my radiation for my prostate, right? Um, they have to put on your stomach four dots, tattoo four dots. It's, a, it's some, some way the radi- the, they, they, they use it to target what they've got to target. Right. And so they put these, anybody who's ever had 
radiation uh, for their, especially for the prostate, I don't know if they do this for something else, have gotten those little tattoos. They still have them. They're very tiny. You can barely see them. I bet, like, like, uh, like needle, needle marks. Yeah, but it's it, their, their registration points or something like that. I don't know what the... What have the, you ever gotten a uh, pneumonia shot? Yeah. I got a pneumonia shot two days ago. My arm is still killing me. Oh, I remember it was a pretty, pretty heavy shot. Right. I went and got, right, my, flu, right. I went and got my, my flu shot for this year, and my arm is still kind of, I just touched it. It's still kind of hurting. Yeah. 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 My arm still hurts. I got the shot on Monday. Now, for those people who are hesitant about the COVID vaccine, how much pain did you have from the COVID vaccine? None. None. Absolutely none. I mean, it, that needle goes in and it leaves and they go it's, it's over. over before you even realize it happened right exactly it right? is it is almost a non shot right know? right 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 yeah. right uh, it's a second out of your day whatever happened you ever remember i don't know if you remember this they had pneumatic injections yes they would have this thing they put it up to your arm and they push it and it was like poop it was like air was pushed through your arm or something. Right, right, right. Something like that. What happened to that? You would have thought that would have been the fastest way to do COVID. Boom, 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 boom. I don't know. I, I know when I was in, when I was in the Navy, we they had those, and one of the guys was getting a shot, and he they they did it with his arm, and he flinched, and his arm moved, and it wound up bleeding. No. Oh. Because the pneumatic thing, I don't know, but I, I just. Well, the same thing would happen if you jerked your arm with a needle in it; it would bleed. I guess, I guess, I guess. But uh, listen, I'm talking to somebody. Are you afraid of needles? They, no. You, uh, obviously not. You were a, an addict for a while. For a while. Yeah. Well, I'll always be an addict, Alex. Well, I. I'm had, just not. I'm just not using. I had a girlfriend years ago who'd been a, an, had been an addict. Okay. Right. And told me that she was entirely, she was absolutely afraid of needles. Really? And I asked her the question I just asked you about how could you be afraid of needles if you were injecting heroin into your arm? She says, Because there's a payoff. That, yes. She said there's a reward. Right. Right. There's a reward for that second of pain. Yeah. yeah. That's but, absolutely correct. Yeah. But I, but I couldn't see how she was afraid of, of, of injections, and yet, you know, she was a heroin addict. She was shooting up like crazy. You know? Well, I'm not a big fan of them running an IV because it's so hard to find a vein. The last time I was in the hospital, Alex, it took them 10 tries to put an IV in. I had cotton balls up both arms, from my shoulder down to my wrist. Well, here's, what, here's what I have them do. I have them go through my wrist. Right. Because they're, right. Look, I, I have a lot of veins in my wrist. They just go boom, and they got it. All right. Right. But if they Rocky do you. here, if they do my arm here, you can't. I get nothing. I get nothing there. So right. if they do the wrist, it's and it's, I don't mind it. And then they, they put the thing in there, and then they tape it down, and it's kind of like you have your own USB port. <laughs> huh. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. You know, and that then that's the way they put all the stuff to go in you, and so on and so forth. It's right. Right. It's, that's where they can mainline some heavy opiates. You know something? It'd be nice. It'd be good for a heroin addict. He'd really have fun with a uh, with a yeah, drip. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. Just every time he wants to do it, he, all he has to do is just inject it into the tube. You know? Right, right, right. Put a stent in. And by the like way, once you, once you got that thing in you, okay, right, and people are going, Ugh, once you got that thing in you, you don't feel it. It it, it could be there for the next month, and you wouldn't mind it. Right, you right. Know. Depending, depending on how well they they. They um, found the vein. You know, it, it could, it could. Uh, well, I, you know, I had one in here for four and a half days when I had my kidney stone. Really? Yeah, and it was very, just very convenient because anytime they wanted to, like, give me some my my dose of uh, high uh, uh, narcotics to put right. my, you know, keep me happy because I was in right. great pain. Because they always go. Here's what happens in the hospital: got a kidney stone. They right. say, how painful is it on a scale of 1 to 10? Always 1 to 10. Yeah, a scale of 1 to 10. Well, it's their scale. It's a good one, you know. Well, okay, so uh, let's say I'm feeling good today and it's only a 5. 
Right. Don't tell them it's a five. Right, right. Because right. they're only going to they're only going to give you five worth of narcotics. Right. You right. Know, right. Tell them, hey, this is absolutely outlandish. I'm I'm still horribly in pain. Oh well, good. We'll juice you up. Boom. Right. 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 Oh, goody. You know. So I mean, I, and I was out on I don't know what they were putting in me, but man, I those days passed fast. Right. I bet it was Demerol. Who knows what it was? All I know is I, I, I want what he's having, you know. Right, right, uh, right, right, right. <laughs> it, was, it was wonderful. It was right, after wonderful. they give it to you, all of a sudden you like everybody. Here I am talking to an, uh, a, well, I will, we'll say an addict. Because right. Because you, you're not, you know, nobody's recovered. Well, you're recovered. Right. You can use the word recovered, right? Recovering. Recovering, okay. Addict. And, and me, and I'm talking to him about injecting drugs in your body right and what you know i mean am, am I, by waxing poetic about the drugs they were giving me in the hospital does that make you want anything or does that no not? no no because we're just talking it's yeah. not like you're standing in front of me you know shooting up right that i don't think i could handle right right did you find let me ask you this we got a little bit of time left here did you find that when you quit you had to avoid the people you used to hang out with Yes. Yeah. Yes. And when you go to clubs, you just let everybody know that you're not doing, you know, you're not doing anything anymore. And to all the other comics and so on. Right, right. You, you let people know. Now, did, did it bother you that maybe they did drugs around you? Well, I could always leave the room well, if they were see, doing drugs. Because here's the thing. people. When I quit smoking, people said, do you mind if I smoke? And I said, no, go ahead. Right. You know, it's not good for you, but go ahead. And right. they go, yeah, but you're an ex-smoker. Why are you saying that? And I said, because I quit. You didn't. Right. There you go. There you go. You know, uh, and, and if, if I can't stay quit because you're smoking around me, then I haven't really emotionally quit cigarettes. Right. That's right. That's right. You know, so I'm, I'm not bothered by that. But uh, anyway, I guess this doesn't look bad. You know what this looks like? I look like Tom Brady. After the game, <laughs> you think so, huh? With those little black things here. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, right. I get you. Yeah. No, otherwise I bear no resemblance to Tom Brady. No, 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 no. You don't. Yeah. No, you don't. In fact, he's probably going to look better ten days dead than I do right now. You know, Good night. So. We'll be here all week. <laughs> yeah. As the old line goes, man, right. oh, man. So, I know I haven't done a show for a couple of weeks. One week I was so sick I couldn't believe it. I mean, I I had I don't know a cold or something, and it was just unrelenting. And then I had this thing happen, and uh, so I've right. been off for about I've been off for t I was off for about a total of two and a half weeks. Well, know. didn't we do a show last week? No, no we, didn't we didn't do, do a show last week. week. No, no. Last right. week, if I had done this, you would have seen a guy that looked like he'd been beaten up. Right, right. Yeah. I would imagine. Yeah. Uh, all this was all this was dark in here, I bet. black and blue. I bet. Yeah, so you know, but you know, I, I, the great thing about never having a pretty face is that you don't m miss it. You can't wreck it. You can't wreck it. You know, go ahead, beat it up, punch right, me. Right, 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 right. You know, just giving me more character. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So I saw a thing about Muhammad Ali. They've been doing a lot of. They did the documentary about Muhammad Ali. So yeah, which was great. Which was great. I don't know if you watched it, did but you, it's great. Did you ever see the movie he made called The Greatest? No. A, in which he's acting out his oh, life. Oh, really? He's really good. Oh, really? He's I really imagine. good in it. Yeah. Yeah. I had his headshot autograph from, I got it from uh, Miriam Ali, his oldest daughter. Oh, really? She was, yeah, she used to hang out at the comedy store. Oh, wow. Very, very sweet lady. Very nice lady. Is Very that, great is that, a, is that a daughter? Yes. Yeah, there are a lot of daughters. You know, a lot of daughters and sons. I think he had like eight or something like that. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. He was, uh, he, he, uh, he, he kept uh, his women. Uh, uh, he was busy. He was busy. Right, was let's busy. leave it at that. Well, you know, it's so good to talk to you again. Always uh, good to this, talk. This, I'm glad this, you're this, feeling better. This, yeah, you look great. I, I wondered how I would be right now, and I'm feeling pretty good about this. You make me feel good, you know. All right. I could I'll talk, take that. I could talk to you for hours. Right. But right, I won't. Right, right. I won't, I won't uh, uh, t uh, give you that uh, 
that horrible problem. Of that platform. That platform. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's the uh, lovely and attractive Stephen Pearl. Thank you, no, Stephen. Uh, why, why do I say that? Jeez almighty. I, Stephen Kravitz, Steve Pearl. Right, and we're nothing that's, alike. That's the way I do it. I know you're nothing alike, but I talk to you, both of you occasionally right. like this. And I just went, I'm Stephen Pearl. But that's right. me. I'm, I'm an old guy, okay? So correct me. No, I did correct you. That's, that's not the first time you've said it either. Oh, then I take everything back because it's Stephen Pearl I enjoy talking to. Anyway, we'll be here all week. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Steve Kravitz, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, Thanks, Steve folks. Kravitz. Thanks, Stephen. Bye. Thank you, Alex. Bye. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, let's see how I uh, look. Am, am I in sync? I'm a little out of sync. Eh, well, who cares? Who cares? Do you care? Well, let me turn on the lights. That would help also if I turn on the lights a little bit. Well, now now I'm more in sync, I guess. I don't know. Uh, I, I, I have no idea why this equipment makes me go out of sync. Uh, but it's, uh, part of it has to do with, with Zoom, I guess, eating up some of the, some of the juice here. But anyway, I, I've got to, I got to try and figure this thing out soon. But uh, I, I don't think anybody notices me being out of sync that much. Do I look that much out of sync there on that monitor there? Look. There we go. We're fine. Hello, everybody. How are you? As you know, last night I left here thoroughly depressed because I didn't have enough people calling the program. And uh, see, I'm out of sync. This is ridiculous. Okay? I'm out of sync. That, uh, I have no idea why uh, I give up. Anyway, so I was really depressed because we didn't get a lot of callers. And uh, I, I was back after a short amount of time. And then I come back and this equipment isn't working right. Look, I just froze again. What was, what's that about? Amazing. Anyway, let me just uh, go to the, uh, let me go to the, uh, uh, bring the people in here who are waiting out there. There are like three of them. Uh, and we'll, uh, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what they're, oh, look, there's, uh, there's Kevin and there's, uh, Josh Wheeler and, uh, Trucker Steve, we, we, we need to see your face. Yeah. Hello, Steve. How are you? How have you been doing, Trucker Steve? Good. Good? Yep. Uh, why, why, how's your, uh, how's your kidney situation? Uh... I'm going good. Um, I switched to a, going to a clinic instead of going to the hospital. Mm -hmm. So my appointments are now around uh, six o'clock in the evening. Mm -hmm. So I just got home a couple hours ago from it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And actually, I'm going to be, instead of going Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I'm switching next week to go Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Okay. And I'll be, I'll be going one, one o'clock in the afternoon. Wow. Okay. Which is better. Yeah. Well, as everybody knows, Trekker Steve had a real problem where he got very sick and they found out uh, your kidneys were all screwed, right? Did they remove mm -hmm. the kidneys? No. No, 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 I still got them. Yeah, but the, 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 you have to do the dialysis in order to make them function, or yeah. make your body function. Yeah. But you're, how are you feeling? A little better? Yeah. I've been having trouble sleeping lately, but yeah. Um, other than that, I'm fine. Yeah. And now you live where again? London, Ontario. London, Ontario. So you've got uh, the Canadian uh, health plan there, right? Right. Uh, hasn't cost me a dime. Hasn't cost you a dime. How about that, folks? Don't you wish you had that happen to you? Except for buying prescriptions or some medications that are not covered. Yeah. On yeah. prescriptions. Yeah. Off the shelf stuff. Off the shelf stuff. Oh, you mean the stuff that isn't prescription? Or, yeah, it isn't prescription. Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah. That's what I hate is that some drugs a doctor will give you now have uh, gone into being generic and go over the counter 
and now it costs more than if it wasn't over the counter and your insurance had to pay for it. So, but uh, basically, it's nice you get out of there not paying a dime. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I've, we got really good insurance this time to take care of our secondary, as they call it in the United States. And uh, when I go to the, like I got the, the eyes done, I walk out of there, I didn't pay a penny, not a cent, not a red cent. You know, of course they kept my eyeballs as insurance, but you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hello to the rest of you. See, it, again, it, you guys are calling, and this is nice. Uh, but where's everybody else? Is what I'm saying. You know, Brian yeah. is at the bar watching the Giants and Dodgers. Yeah, that I know. He's a big Giants fan, so yeah, don't expect to see him tonight. Yeah, yeah, and uh, let's especially see. if they go on a long run in the. Uh, Major League Baseball playoffs this year. Well, I haven't seen Jeff in a long time, you know, uh, and uh, I don't understand. Uh, I haven't seen, he hasn't called the show. Uh, it, it, and what's funny is that occasionally when somebody tries to call my Zoom number, I'll get a notification in the mail that says, so-and-so is trying to Zoom you or is tr signed on to Zoom you. And I get a lot of them for Jeff, 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 Jeff. And then I go on last night and there's no Jeff. So now I'm worried when I don't hear from somebody, especially somebody Jeff's age and with Jeff's history, uh, I, I begin to wonder, you know, about whether he's okay or not. So, you know. Anyway, how you doing, Josh? Doing good. How you doing? Fine. We have talked since, uh, since my procedure because we get together privately, you, Kevin, and I, and Patrick, and talk on the weekend. So I've seen you since I had the operation. You got to see me, though, before I let anybody else see me. Tell them how bad I looked. I mean, you look like they just took you out of one of those pyramids in Egypt and uh, unwrapped you, but it was all right. <laughs> we made it through the night. Oh, boy. I was pretty drunk, so maybe it wasn't as bad as I thought it was. You know, the worst part about it is, look, you know, when I was a kid, okay, when I was a kid, I used to, um, I, I used to um, uh, uh, love going to a doctor because after he did something, but when he did something, he gave you really good drugs, and got you really high, you know, yeah. and that was very cool, all right? Uh, not anymore. Not anymore. I don't think uh, I don't think you even get lollipops. I, you. If you do, they probably bill your insurance company. I, I went home and I, you know we used to go home. The doctor would give you a handful of Vicodin and say, "Have fun, <laughs> right? You know yeah, this will take care of you. This will take care of the pain." Now you know what he says to me. I said, "What do I do for the pain?" He says, uh, "Take three Tylenol." What? Yeah. Not right. even Tylenol with codeine. <laughs> Not Tylenol and something else. How about some Vicodin, you know? No. So that's the no. problem. You know. you gotta see a drug dealer if you want some of that. Yep, 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 yep. So anyway, I, it, it, it's ridiculous. You, I, you, you can't get high anymore. They don't do it. And uh, they send you home, they send me home with a cream, an antibiotic for my eyes, and uh, a prednisone. Which is an anti-inflammatory. Yeah, it's a steroid, right? A steroid, and that's it. Forget it. That's all I got. Yeah. You know. Right. Give I me mean, that's not. Uh, it's not really all that great. I mean, anything that you know involves anesthesia and all that is usually at least fairly serious and should involve some sort of pain medication. You know, I mean. Well, we would. Yeah, it's would, like. Yeah. yeah. You would think. So like I said, you know, when my father had that back surgery and neck surgery, you know, I don't know, maybe two months ago, almost three months ago now, I mean, they sent him home with 10 days worth of Percocet. I mean, and he laid him on a table for six and a half, yeah, seven hours. Yeah, where is that? got a 12-inch slit in his back. I mean, my, my, old, my, old, my old producer, Albert, is sitting over here. Whatever happened to the days of all those drugs we used to get? Maybe we ran out. Maybe we maybe we ran out. Yeah. Maybe I took them yeah. all. Yeah. 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 But I mean, it, it. They're afraid to give them to you now because they're afraid of getting in trouble with the government. 
you know? Right. Well, yeah, yeah I mean, they're just, I mean, I like am? a lot of people became yeah. highly dependent. And then just like with tobacco, there were a lot of lawsuits and they shelled out a lot of money. And that's, you know, how it went. But hey, look, in my mind, I mean, just sell them to fucking Walmart. If you want to get high and get well, fucked up, my, so what? My, you know, my, I mean, yeah. I can drink 14 beers and be just as fucking bad. I mean, I mean, I, that would cost me less money and I would, I'm less able to function than I am on uh, opium based shit. So, I mean, yeah, <laughs> I mean, but they're not doing anybody any favors. I mean. Well, you know, if you give me a, 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 a small prescription for Vicodin as an example, so at least I get high and I'm forgetting, you know, I'm not forgetting the pain, okay? Right. And I, I have to admit, this wasn't all that painful. I'll tell you what was painful. During the operation, right, uh, they said, we're going we're gonna to sedate you, uh, give you some sedation. And I said, fine, that's good. Because I had sedation when I had the... Uh, the prostate seed thing done and they sedated me so much that I didn't know what was going on right I was in la la land and then they did a spinal on me so the bottom half of my body wasn't working you know and uh, I did my impression of Patrick you know so uh, but uh, in fact I told Patrick I know what it's what you're going through because I for at least three hours the bottom part of my body wouldn't work you know so anyway um, so I, uh, I, 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 th I remember that sedation. He said, we're going to do light sedation on you because I need to be able to have you open your eyelids and close your eyelids for me so I know what I'm doing, you know, that I'm doing right. And so I go, okay, fine. Light sedation means that when he was sticking de deadening stuff in my eyelids, I felt it. You know, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't pleasant. And the whole experience wasn't particularly pleasant. Uh, and then when we got to the bottom lids, he said, well, we can heavily, more heavily sedate you now. I wouldn't have known it, you know. I mean, I didn't feel any real sedation going on. And then he says to me, I go to him the other day, and he looks at it, and he says, well, one eye I didn't get up just right because you were a very difficult patient. I said, what do you mean? He says, you were squirming a lot, moving a lot. And I'm going, you're sticking fucking needles in my eyelids. What am I supposed to do? Natural reaction. Oh, well, don't be a pussy. But, you know? Come on. You say that's your place. <laughs> you didn't give me enough drugs. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, you, you want a, a, very, a very pliant patient? Then give me some drug that makes me pliant. Yeah. Okay. One that will still make me open my eyes, but at the same time keep me in la la land, you know. So I mean, they they can't put people under, you know, anesthesia and like pay someone to hold your eyes open for the guy or yeah, whatever. I don't know. Yeah, someone but, who could charge your insurance company like he was eight thousand dollars for well, three hours. He was also time. saying he was also saying that he had uh, he had he had yeah. to maybe we might have to go back in and do this eye a little more bring it up just a little bit more because he didn't get it just right. And I'm thinking sure, to myself, not? well, you know, the last time he told me that if I wanted to do away with the bags, yeah. that for $4,000 he could do away with the bags, and it'd be more expensive if I only wanted the bags done. But because I'm going in and Medicare is taking care of this, okay, oh, you, and then taking care of the anesthesiologist, he'll only charge me $4,000 for the bags. By the way, that's two thousand dollars a bag, okay. That's a lot. <laughs> you get a group rate. <laughs> and um, so I'm thinking, if I have to go back in and do it, I might rethink whether I should do the bags or not. What do you guys think? Well, you can't tell now because I'm still swollen down here. But, but it, would Medicare pick up the bags, or you have to pay out of pocket? Huh? But would now, now my eyes pocket? are wide open. See that? You never saw me do <laughs> that before. Your so I'm like you're wired up like we're drinking coffee. Yeah. You see, you can oh, see like, would you Medicare pick up the bag? Like the would they pick up that? No, 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 no. See, that's cosmetic. Oh, uh, you see, cosmetic. Yeah. But say it's bothering your eye, your vision. Can you say, hey, listen, it's bothering my vision? No, the bags aren't. Can't possibly bother your vision. They don't. You push, they, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, that once you go below the lids. 
That's You're it. now in cosmetic surgery. Territory. You're in Joe Rivers territory when you're below the lids. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Can you hear it okay, by the way? Yeah, okay. Uh, I heard you say, I was listening to the replay, when you said last night $4,000, I almost fell off the chair. I was listening in the afternoon and you told Phil. Yeah, wow. Yeah. That's, uh, that's four iPhones. <laughs> I was like, holy <laughs> moly, that's a lot. It's four iPhones, yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, anyway, I just, uh, you know, I, um, and then I, I come, you know, I, I went through the whole process of healing. And then one of the reasons, I, mean, I probably could have gone on the air, you know, that Thursday or so on, but I didn't because I looked like I had been in a bad fight, you know, and um, I needed to, you know, and then I come back last night and nobody's calling and I go, they really forgot, right, didn't they? They yeah. really forgot. I didn't think you were going to be on. I didn't. I didn't realize it until this morning when I saw the show up. I was oh shit, he went on. I called Chucky. I said Alex went on. Then I saw your eyes. I said oh my god, it looked like you were right. I said it looked like you got went around with Mike Tyson for a brief moment. <laughs> and I'm at, th at this point in my life, where doctors really want to want to do a lot of stuff to me because they I'm an opportunity. You well, know, they see, I, they see I, they can make money. Yeah. No. I mean, you know, the eye thing. I mean. I probably could have lived without it, but I would have been like half blind kind of when I was walking around. But, you know, it's good that you got it because it was your vision, too. Like you were saying, you couldn't really watch TV. Yeah. Or, uh, you could, oh, but yeah. you weren't getting and, But of here's that. the fear that I have. I get the bags done, and then two weeks later, mm -hmm. I die. <laughs> you know, I mean. Uh, In the casket, you know, you do. Keep your eyes yeah. open. <laughs> yeah. Um, My mother would, uh, <laughs> she used to always say, but she had that. My mother had that eye problem where she couldn't see one of her eyes. I forget what they called it, the macular degeneration. Oh, or degeneration, something. yeah. Well, this thing yeah. is called ptosis. Okay. Which I, I, I used to go to the eye doctor with. I used to always ask him questions. It's, that's a word you don't want to say to people when you've got uh, COVID. Ptosis, you know. Ptosis? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so how you doing, uh, um, Kevin? Okay. Yeah? Been busy. What have you been, what have you been doing? Oh, high school stuff. Yeah, you go back. You went uh, back to high. He went back to high school, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, moving at diploma. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah, building band props. Huh? <clears throat> building band props for the the marching band for my daughter's marching band. Oh, okay. And stuff, so okay. They're going on tour, mm -hmm. so. Hmm. Yeah, okay. it's been brutal. Yeah. Well, that's uh, that's uh, that's uh, so so. Uh, uh, and your daughter, you say, is quite a musician actually yeah 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 that's terrific yeah she leads the saxophone section she's the lisa simpson of yeah uh, <laughs> yeah so what uh, josh you you know uh, i have not been watching the news I, i'm just finding it very hard to watch because quite frankly it's very boring lately it's the same stories over and over again. Every time I'm, Marjorie loves watching MSNBC, and yeah. um, uh, I, I a sailor for it. Okay, I yeah. I can't watch it. I, I just find that every every hour it's the same goddamn stories every day. You know, and we don't have enough yeah. story, enough enough stories about what Trump did wrong. Uh, we'll go we'll go to our fallback position of talking about COVID. Yeah, you know, or what I, Schumer made an ass out of himself because he got his way. What says who? You know, and the, the 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 infrastructure bill that's been a that's been a a hot little potato they tossed around a little bit the last couple of weeks. Yeah, but you know, you know, it's kind of like you ever watch a movie and you know that the hero of the movie isn't going to get killed because he's the star. Okay. So really what you're waiting to see is how the star gets out of getting killed. All right. So you, you know the ending is, is, is always going to not include him as part of the dead people. Uh, the same is true of this, of, this infrastru of this bill. To, like, you know, at the last minute, we've got to have enough money to pay our bills. Will we be able to do it? Of course we'll be able to do it. They will always wait till the last minute to do it. So why play games with them? Just say, call us up when it's the last minute and we'll get together and do this thing. Pretty much. Am I right, yeah. Josh? Yeah. I mean, and, you know, the other thing is, 
for all the talk that we get at times about, you know, our our national, our deficit, our debt, you know, our, our budget and politicians, really of both sides, but specifically on the right, will we'll get on television or during their campaigns and they'll say, you know, our government should run, you know, just like your family where you sit around that dining room table and you talk about what you can pay and what you can't and how you should pay it and all that. And I mean, so... Okay, do average Americans, you know, when the when the date for their their mortgage payment is is due on the 15th, do they wait until 11:59 and 59 seconds the night before to call the fucking mortgage company up and try to pay it and haggle with them about it, you know, for the few seconds that they have before it's due? No, you know, I don't think they do. I mean, if you don't have the money, maybe you do, but no, I, that's not what people do, right? I mean, that's, that's, not, that's not responsible behavior. Right. Okay. Right. You know, I don't do that. But why I mean, do they always wait till the last minute? You know that we're never going to default. You well, know, we right. never will. But, but, but they do it. They do it so that they can drag in completely unrelated policy once and they can basically blackmail people again for all their talk about how it should be run like an american family or an american business i don't basically like i said i don't call my mortgage company up and say, I, I tell you what if you do something for me uh and you've got about 10 seconds with a gun to your head to make a decision i'll, I'll pay you my monthly mortgage payment that i signed a contract and agreed that i would pay you some time ago but if you don't do it well then you know I, I just won't. Pay. I mean, that's lose lose all the way around, you know. And it's and it's plain stupid, uh, you know. So why do people listen to those to the, that type of rhetoric and you know shake their head up and down and agree with again, like I said, both sides, but specifically, I think the people on the right, and then let them do those types of things and not say, well, that's utterly ridiculous and it's irresponsible. You know, that that should not be tied to anything. You know, that should be tied to nothing. It should just be done. It should just be something that we have to do because the money's already been spent and now we have to pay for it. But they don't do it. Right. And, and you know, I, again, I see the same stupid behavior on the other side sometimes. You know, I don't agree with the fact that we basically have an agreement to spend $1.5 trillion on American infrastructure, something the last four or five presidents tried to do and couldn't, and we finally have it. Mm -hmm. It's finally done. And it's our own people holding it up because, oh, well, if we're going to do that, we got to get another $5 trillion for social justice and all this, you know, so on and so forth. Again, all stuff I can probably get on board with, but you're going to hold it all up because mm -hmm. you can't do something that you've already agreed to do unless you do it all. I mean, it's, 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 this is why people fucking hate them. Okay. It's, uh, it's right. It's why. Yeah. Uh, by the way, we've been joined by Patrick. Hello, Patrick. How are you? Good to I'm see you. Super huh? wonderful. You're super wonderful. You're always super wonderful. I've never asked you that question. You said, I feel like crap. You know, no. Hey, listen, guy, you're in a goddamn wheelchair. You've got to pee through a tube, and everything's great? Yeah. Okay. I'll buy that. See, that's the attitude I want to have. But it's always evaded me. You know? I've yeah. never been able to yeah. have that <laughs> attitude. And I have nothing to complain about, right? Got a little arthritis here, right? Got a little neuropathy in my feet. Big fucking deal. Meanwhile, you're in a wheelchair, got to pee through a tube. You, what else is, uh, oh, you got hearing aids? Yeah, hearing aids. Hearing, aid, hearing aids. I mean, th this is a person with some problems there. And he goes through life just going, how you doing, Patrick? Peachy. Well, and the other thing that makes my life good is I don't watch MSNBC. So. Well, <laughs> True. well, neither do I. We have that in common now. You know what? I, I mean, I, hmm? oh, go ahead. But I was going to say, you mentioned something when we were talking uh, on the weekends, because we get together and have this little private soiree, okay? Uh, and and we, you were saying, I think one of us was saying how sick we were of seeing Fauci on everything. Yeah, I think we were pretty much all were How many here that? are yeah. sick and tired of, of uh, Dr. Fauci? 
And, and we all, I think we all agreed that it was not a personal, you know, thing. And I certainly don't agree with all this, you know, garbage coming from the right about, you know, how he's some kind of evil, you know. Oh, right. I'm not saying that he's whatever. evil. I mean, come on. I'm, we don't need to put a snake in the guy's fucking mailbox. Yeah, but I'm <laughs> sick. I'm sick. And ti- I'm sick and tired of seeing him every every time I turn on the TV set. Yes. I mean, we, but well, I mean, we could maybe send him on a fucking cruise to the Caribbean. Also, you know who else I think should shut up no? a little more? Uh, kind of tone it down Biden because <laughs> he's on he's on about as much as Trump was it's always about okay the vaccine, but the, the difference vaccine. is in the case of Trump we got a few laughs yeah. you know really, in, in Biden's really case I'm I'm having to pinch myself to keep myself awake yeah. He's not a good speaker. Yeah, it's almost like you hear him speak. I mean, I, there are like very, little, very little things I agreed with Donald Trump on, but calling him Sleepy Joe was not bad. No, he would. He kind of, yeah, he does because he's so like, it's always like the end of the world is coming with him. Like, it's never like a sunny day. It's always like, you know, don't leave the house. It's always, he's just too down. Well, I don't know that he's down. I just... I don't think he has those kind of lead. He doesn't have the leadership ability, say, of an Obama who could get up, give a speech, and rally the country you don't make together. You feel good about yourself. Yeah, huh? it's like he don't make you feel good about yourself. Really, it's like you know, it, it isn't, it isn't seven hundred thousand dead, but don't worry about it. We're gonna have subways. There's nothing coming. I mean, give me something. Yeah, seven hundred. <laughs> like can you imagine? barricade yourself in the house? Seven hundred thousand people dead. Yeah, dead. Yeah. And, and and here's my question: With seven hundred thousand people dead, why is it traffic comes to a standstill in New York City? Oh God! I mean, Queens, shouldn't like it be a little lighter because some of them are dead? You got to see the expressway out. It's going to Long Island. Me and my brother were it's going got, to I got the thing, I'll tell you the thing I loved about COVID: the traffic. You could get in a car and just zoom down Fifth Avenue. Yeah, and that's what it is. <laughs> barring the lights, you know, you could just, you wouldn't, there wouldn't be anything around. Now yeah. it's like, uh, you know, pain in the ass. You know, so. I mean, they, the Fauci thing, though, I mean, again, it just, he's not, you know, a bad guy or anything. And no, he's not he, a bad, that's not what I'm saying. No. I'm just sick and tired right. of every right. time I'm turning on my TV set, there he is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I mean, I could just, you know, he could use a vacation. I mean, you know, could COVID still be here when you get back? You know, that's what we say, at, you know, like we're, I work or whatever, and, you know, big business. Is, you know, when it's, you've already worked like 12 hours and it's time to go home and, you know, this is like, ah, that, that shit will still be fucked up on Monday, man. You know, well, I just, uh, we'll I, be I, back. <laughs> you know, I just, uh, I, I just wish they would. The trouble is with all these news networks, they have to gin up the news. Yeah. You know, so if there was nothing happening, let's just say one day life was so good, there was the COVID thing was solved and there was no infrastructure <laughs> problem and there was no this and no that. Uh, they would find something to gin up. Yeah, there's a tropical wave off of Africa and this could possibly turn into the biggest fucking hurricane in 300 years. Yeah. Which means. Watch it yeah. all the way home. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, yeah, you're right. They would find something. I mean, I just, you know, Fauci, it's like the same, you know, turn the TV on Sunday and it's, you know, he's on Meet the Press and he's on Stephanopoulos and he's on Face the Day. Fuck. I mean, can one of those goddamn shows not have him on? Well, if, you know, if, if, he had something, if he had something, if he had something new to tell us, okay. Yeah, right. But he really doesn't, you know. I mean, uh, I'll tell you what I did, who I did like. Uh, uh, Andrew Cuomo I really liked and I really liked him because he was kind of like a cheerleader you know come on we can get this thing we can bend the curve we come on wear your masks uh, get your in, in, your, your, your inoculations your you know vaccines I mean he was a cheerleader and he was a damn good one he took a he took a very bad situation here in New York. Nine hundred people dying every day. Okay, I mean, under his watch, something like 15, what fifteen thousand people died, something like that, a little more than that, maybe more. 
uh, until we were able to get the thing under control because it hit us first. And he went on television every day and told people, wear the mask, come on, we can do it, people. And simply by being a cheerleader, took the curve and bent it and made it go the other direction. Well, you know, Fauci's not that way. Fauci's just simply like, uh, oh, I don't know, your family doctor giving you some advice about your health, all right? And, and Biden is kind of like your grandfather saying, don't pick your nose, you know? I mean, it, 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 we, we, need, we don't have people out there right now who are great cheerleaders. Obama, I think Obama was a pretty good cheerleader, don't you? He was a good speaker. He really was a good speaker. Yeah. Like you, yeah. like you, he can hit. You know what? Biden just has no charisma. Like it's just like Trump. We went from stupid in Trump who couldn't put out, couldn't put sentences together, to this guy who just, like you say, he well, I, no, I, okay. maybe it's his. I don't want to say maybe it's his age. I don't know. Maybe let he's me, just well, tired. Let, let me say not. I think he is tired. Uh, but I, uh, uh, I will say that as opposed to Trump, he is a person who has a great deal of history and learning and ability and is re ready for the job, okay? Trump wasn't ready for anything. He wasn't ready for lunchtime, you know? <laughs> I mean, uh, he, it, it was, it, that was he was terrible. He was just disgusting. Yeah. And the pants used to be yeah, I mean, it, they, you know, I certainly wish that we could focus on something else or at least take a break from some of it. Well, maybe maybe no, at least a little bit. maybe, maybe yeah. the news people should say, you know, there's no news today, so we're going to run cartoons. That'd be I'd be fine with that. You know, I mean, they could do yeah. that over at CNN because they own the Cartoon Network. Oh. You know, and by the way, the Cartoon Network probably gets better ratings than they do. So why not run cartoons yeah. when there's no news? Hey, there's nothing yeah. much happening today. You know. Yeah. I mean, you know, Congress is basically a cartoon anymore. So, you know, it's what's the difference? Major. Cartoon. I mean, again, they, you know, they can't. I mean, it. I mean, that shit's getting out of hand. I mean, you know, I mean, look, it's it's no wonder when you know they take polls that Congress polls in approval and and you know like what the single digits or like the low you know ten, eleven, twelve percent or whatever. I mean, that's the kind of thing that lets uh, contributes a lot to having someone like. Trump come to power is because, you know, when you get someone who comes along and talks, you know, tons of shit about those people, it's not hard to get people to agree with you, you know, that Congress is well, I am, worthless I, and I'm get, I'll make it better. You I am know? getting a little mad at people who are constantly going after OAC. Uh, to begin with, I like OAC because I think she's a shit disturber and I think that's good to have around. Okay? And it always always makes people question their own stem you know stances on things when there's a, a movement like that plus <laughs> finally there's a woman in congress who i can fantasize about you know um uh, right patrick come on tell me oac I hasn't given you hasn't I, hasn't given you a slight woody come on i mean she could give me a head and that's <laughs> you know, i mean i I don't want to really spend any time with her if I don't, you know, beyond that. Yeah, but I think, uh, I think, I, I think, well, I'd be enjoy talking to her, you know, yeah. no, Ch chatting it, her up as it were. Yeah, I mean, every time she opens her mouth, I think of how to well, not have well, her open her mouth. Well, no, you want her to open her mouth, I think. Right, yeah. but when words come out... Oh, you don't want the words. You don't want the yeah, words is what... Yeah, I... No. Yeah. I I think she's... Um, I, I, you know, I like her. I like her because she's ballsy. You know, I mean, you may not like her because she spouts off her mouth a lot, but she keeps everybody else honest. She, You know, she makes everybody else come to the table and talk about stuff. And maybe you don't have to agree with what he, she believes in, uh, but, you know... It's, uh, oh, here comes Jack Bishop. But, you know, uh, I was going to say a few things about her, but then again, I, I was thinking, you know, I'm at this point in my life and my career where it doesn't matter what I say. Nobody's going to be able to, uh, to me to me or uh, to uh, uh, run me out of town because of something I say because I'm run out of town already, you know. Uh, so if I said that I, I considered her a great piece of ass, would that be all right? 
Would that be considered a compliment, or, or am I am I now going to have people complain? Well, my she keeps my sponsors are going to cancel. She yeah. keeps reminding everybody she's from the Bronx, so she should be able to handle something like that if you said it. Yeah. Oh, she's no, she's tough. She's tough. You know. Um, uh, but I mean, I, I I happen to think she's very attractive. Let me put it that way. She's very attractive. Okay. I I I rescind piece of ass. Okay. But she is. Anyway, uh, hello, jo uh, uh, yeah, that guy, <laughs> Jack Bishop. How are you? Surprisingly good. You know, I, I I've really enjoyed the last ten minutes of this conversation as I was getting ready for the intersection, which comes along at the top of the hour. Yeah, that's a plug. That's what we call me. cross promotion in the business. Yes, but uh, you know, don't you think really that we? Uh, we don't get it you know uh we want a leader that's entertaining <clears throat> now i have read somewhere that in today's uh media driven politics uh abe lincoln wouldn't have stood a chance oh oh he, well here here's here's the point i always used to make that all of the successful politicians of various times were successful based upon the technology available to them and in the case exactly. of Abe Lincoln, he looked big. He looked big in the back of a train. Mm -hmm. He was imposing in the back of a train. Now when you I got when thought, you got to when you got to radio, our first radio president was FDR. Yeah, he did the fireside chats. All you had to hear was his voice. You didn't want to really see him. You know, here's this uh, guy who had no uh, ability to walk and whatever. And he could just sit in a chair in front of a microphone and with that very commanding voice, inspire a nation. All right? Our first but TV president was, was Kennedy. Kennedy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You so, know, so I'm thinking that what we really need is maybe we need a president and a prime minister. Well, could you say that Trump was maybe the first internet president? Of course. Yeah. Hmm. Of course. But maybe we need a president who does the nuts and bolts, grind it out kind of stuff, and a prime minister who stands up in front of the cameras and in front of the microphones and makes us feel good. Hmm. There are some countries that do that. Yeah, yeah. Can't that be the vice president that we haven't heard shit from in weeks? Well, the thing is, we're not supposed to hear shit from the vice president. The vice president the is usually- Can't that be her job? No, it why? Well, instead of another person in government, i.e. a prime minister, couldn't the office of the vice president do what you're describing, which no. is go out and make the people feel good while the president does no. it? You know what it is? Yeah. The vice presidency in America is like miscongeniality. You know? All she's supposed to do is just serve and wait in case maybe somebody outs miss america and then she gets into that position right but otherwise she's just sitting in the sidelines one of the few texans out of history that uh, i believe said the right thing at the right time was a guy named john nance garner mm -hmm. who was uh fdr's was he the second vice well, president? i think he was the second vice president yeah uh, oddly enough, I had a picture of my grandfather with John Nance Garner that I've been looking for for years and I've lost. But, but anyway, uh, John Nance Garner said, <clears throat> being the president of the United States is worth about a bucket of spit. Now, he didn't say spit, but the press said he said spit. Oh, okay. You know? Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, it, what he does is what Alex said. He sits and waits for something to happen. And by and large, our vice presidents historically have not said anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it ain't going to work the way we do it. Right. Right. Um, <clears throat> so um, I don't know. I just I, I just I, I, I haven't been paying much attention to the news. You know. Well, there's really not a lot of news right now that deserves a lot of attention. What I love is a story about, I can't remember the couple, and they were one of the first people that were charged with uh, criminal action 
based upon the fact that they were using rather un illegal ways of getting their kids into colleges. Mm -hmm. uh, and they today they just uh, found them. You know, they found them guilty, and today they 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 they're going to sentence them. I th I don't know if they've sentenced them yet. I don't think they sentenced but, them. But yet. they refused to cop a plea. They refused mm -hmm. to do what the government wanted them to do, what the government always wants you to do, which is to kind of admit your guilt, and then they save a lot of money, and then they give you a minimum sentence. In this case, they said, we're standing by our gun. So it looks like they're going to get like 20 years. <laughs> you know? I mean. That's the kind of news we're, you know, we're getting. You know, it's like I am so tired of talking to people both on the intersection, which comes along and... I know, you already plugged it once. <laughs> <laughs> I'm greedy. Anyway, I'm tired of talking about this Texas abortion bill that got passed three weeks ago. Well, yes and no. I mean, people have been talking about it enough that finally, at last, you had a... Uh, uh, a fed, what is it? Federal judge was it? Federal judge issued yeah. a stay order on it, which got reversed yesterday. The stay right. order was issued on Wednesday. A higher federal judge said, "Nope, sorry, I'm, I'm reversing it." The reversing so now, what? The what the what the governor did? Reversing what the governor did? No, reversing what the first judge did. In other it words, he the, stated. it saying the governor couldn't do stated, this, couldn't do this, and now they turned around and said, yes, he can. Yes. Oh, and it's got to fight its way through the courts like it's supposed to do. But uh, the reality of the thing is this. If anybody on either side thinks it's going to stop abortions, I got another thing coming. Well, them. to begin with, look, let's be very honest about it. It's not like Texas is the only state in the union. You no. know, you can get in a car and probably within three or four hours be to an abortion clinic in another state. Uh, well, not in Louisiana, maybe in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. But it takes, if you're in the valley, Southern <clears throat> Valley of Texas, it takes just about a day to get to Oklahoma. Okay. Because, you know, it's, it's, it's huge, you know, doing this and, 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 and the fact of the matter is our uh, our right-wing brothers and sisters, they don't really give a damn about kids. Because well, well, my question, and my question as as is, born, in, in your they state, they don't want to spend any money on them? My question is, in your state, are, yes. there, are there doctors who are saying, fuck it, I'm going to do them anyway? Yeah, yeah. Because in our state, going after the doctors is not done by the state of Texas. It's done by individuals who file suits. Let me ask Trekker Steve something. Steve, uh, up in up in Canada, uh, abortion is legal, right? Hmm? Yeah. And do they ever do they ever question it? Uh, we have those pro-lifers here too mm -hmm. and they do try and uh get it switched but no mm -hmm. uh, i think it's uh, it's good all across canada yeah. it's been like that for years you see i mean here we have the we're gonna have the we're gonna have kind of a spotted uh, uh physical map in which this state has it but this state doesn't have it but this state has it but this state doesn't have it uh, and, and and that can't be. All states should have to abide by the same. Uh, well, but, well, they did. <clears throat> they did until this Texas law came along, and a couple of other states. What is wrong with your governor? He's de he's a doofus. I mean, what's wrong with him? Does he wake up in the morning and say, "What can I do to be an absolute prick"? Well, the thing is, look. Right now, the state of Texas, there is not one Democrat holding a statewide office. Mm. You know, well, somebody's got a radio on in the background. Do I hear it? I can hear it, yeah, but I don't know where it's at. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. Well, hold on a second. Let me do something here. Got the ball game on. Oh, you have the ball game on? Oh, well, you watch it, uh. trucker. Uh, it's San Francisco, LA, three nothing, San Fran. Oh man! So Brian's happy. 
Yeah, right. But that's got to be, you know, this uh, freeway battle they're having in uh, in uh, my home state. Mm-hmm. If my old man was alive, he'd say, turn off that goddamn political shit and let's get to something important like the ball game. Yeah. Let me ask you something, Josh, um, uh, because you're, you, you know the Supreme Court. At least you're a Supreme Court watcher. Uh, Roe versus Wade, do you think they're really going to ever say, hey, no on that? Or are, are they going to go with what so many other uh, jurists on that uh, august uh, uh, panel have said in the past, that it's case law, you know? You got to turn, you you gotta turn down the certain, TV set, you know? trucker Steve. I mean, you can't, you certainly can't predict something like that. I mean, it's, you know, but I don't think that it's a, that it, I don't think it's as given that it's as good as gone that a lot of people think that it is because some of these hard issues, you just don't have a read on the way some people will think. And Mm -hmm. I don't know how many times we would have to be surprised by a certain justice leaning a way that we didn't think that he or she would before we realized that that's just kind of how it is, that we can't predict these things. I think people in the know look at it that way, but average citizens have been trained by the media and others to just assume that they will lean a certain way based on who they were appointed by mm-hmm. or what uh, the media told them they would do. And it, it doesn't turn out that way very, very often, by the way, in my speaking, opinion. Speaking so, of, yeah. uh, you know, we don't know. Speaking of the Supreme Court, they have a show on, I don't know if anybody's seen it, called American Crime Story Impeachment. No. Uh, and it, it, it's produced, oddly enough, among among the producers is Monica Lewinsky. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. And it is a Monica Lewinsky tale and so on and so forth. And they show, um, <clears throat> who was the, uh, who, who ran the, um, the committee that was in charge of uh, going after Bill Clinton? What was his name? Uh, Ken Starr. Ken Starr. Uh, Ken Starr's it's a dramatic thing and Ken Starr's got all these guys sitting around a table and it's like what do you think Brett somebody's playing Brett Kavanaugh Brett Kavanaugh was on the Kevin Starr uh, committee yeah yeah right yeah on the team yeah as it were. I mean the, the court's not really all that predictable a lot of times I mean I think that in general Historically, they are fairly reluctant to overturn you know, case legal law precedent yeah. that has been in place for long periods of time. Yeah, but now, now however, again, however, it does happen. And I mean, however, you know, however, isolated cases. However, you also have a bunch of people on that court now, the ones appointed by Trump, who don't have that same sense of history. Maybe that a maybe lot of not. the others do. I mean, I, I don't I don't know that we know because they don't have a lot of you know they haven't played that many games. Okay, we don't have that much film on them. I mean, yeah. yeah. So you know, I I don't know that we really know. I, I think that we have a, a, a somewhat of a sense of maybe their personal belief mm-hmm. in some cases based on some things that they may have said or some things that people reported that they said or a club they belong to or something. But, you know, I I mean, I I, I can point you in the direction of, you know, interviews and book talks and and, and one-on-one panel discussions or whatever of, of several justices, including Justice Scalia, who, you know, personally had real reservations about a certain policy or law but yet decided legally uh, the opposite of his own personal conscience because he felt that's what the law required him to do. They you haven't know? been yeah. challenged in the seat yet. Right. But, you know. So, so that, I mean, they're, they're, they're about to be challenged in the seat, and we'll see what happens. What do you mean but, challenged right. in the What do you mean be challenged in the seat? Exactly. Well, they haven't been they haven't been on the cor- on, on the Supreme Court. Now they are. And they're about ready to be, you know, challenged with these these uh, cases coming up. 
mm-hmm. and we'll actually see what what they're going to do. Yeah, and, 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 and there has been really their opinions, and you know, everybody's got an asshole. Everybody's got an opinion, but once yeah. they're in that seat, they're going to actually have to put the put the law to test and see what they actually, you know, I'm will do. To, I'm trying to remember. Well, there, there hasn't really been a, a serious challenge to abortion law um, in quite some time, you know, maybe 35, you know, 30 to 40, somewhere in that range, 30, 40 years. I mean, there have been some looks at it, but I, I mean, like a, but I, but I mean a serious one where, you know, in black and white letters, someone on the challenging side has asked to basically overturn what we've had as law for, you know, half a century now. I mean, you know, that's a serious, you know, question and we haven't had anything really approaching that level. And I would not discount the fact that there are several other cases um, pending of sort of equal importance such as gun rights and stuff like that. And I just don't know legally how much the justices that are on the court now want to upend, you know, decades long of what has basically been considered, you know, mostly settled law. Right. I mean, I'm not saying that they're going to allow that to affect what they may think legally. I'm but just again, saying. But, but again, so again, I'm, I'm asking you this: is you know, that, the, that the, it's going to be tough? I'm asking you this, though: the Trump appointees to that august panel, um, I don't think have the same sense of history that way. That's what I'm worried about. You know, maybe yeah. if they're there for the next 20 years after it's over, some of the ones are all the way to the right might go all the way to the left. I mean, we've had that happen on any number of occasions. Right. I mean, you remember when uh, years ago they appointed Earl Warren to be the uh, to be the uh, chief justice, thinking that he'd be a shoe in for right wing politics, right? Where did he he came? They they hated him so much that John Birch Society wanted to lynch him. Right. Yeah. I mean, but all I'm saying is that in some ways, though, that sort of example or and those examples as a whole should help people better understand or helps me prove my belief or my theory mm-hmm. that people need to understand that in the federal courts, specifically in the highest court, there is a difference in judicial philosophy and, and personal politics. Right. If there wasn't, how else would we have things like that yeah. develop on a on a decently, you know, regular basis? I right. mean, you know, that's, Jack that's has, just what Jack, I'm saying. Jack has something to say. I know he has well, to get going. Yeah, I got to go here. But, uh, you know, we have seen something happen already, though, in the opening days of this new session that has surprised some of us. Clarence Thomas is asking questions. That's yeah. new. Like, where's the bathroom? (laughs) No, he's actually asking lawyers coming before the Supreme Court real questions. Hmm. And, you know, when I saw that, watching uh, some some, uh, film on that, or some video on that, I said, God damn, he woke up. Now, whether he stays awake, we'll see. Yeah, yeah. We'll see here in a minute. We'll see the intersection. Let me go get ready for that. Join okay. us if you would. Okay. See you later. Uh, but uh, see you, Oh, by the way, your eyes look fabulous, darling. Fabulous. Uh, yeah, right. It's I'm still, serious. No, you I look gotta, wonderful. I've got to get rid of this part of it. Here. You know, Don't worry. That, as my mother said about my bad leg, that'll go away in time. <laughs> 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 okay, we'll see you later. Um Anything to say, uh, uh, Patrick? I mean, uh, are you sick and tired of what you see going on in Congress where nothing's going on? I think uh, there was some movement Yeah. Uh, this week that Mitt McConnell agreed to allow the debt ceiling to be raised till December and allow the Democrats to figure out a strategy that they want to do for the rest of the stuff. I mean, that, that would done or, or am i out of my mind but i thought that yeah, i but he always that comes out he, but he could have said this five weeks ago you know but he waited till the last minute to say it that's the problem 
Well, that politics, Alex. I mean, but I, you know, I don't buy that. You see, I don't buy, buy that's politics. You know, I mean, the, the, if that if I say that about politics, I might as well say, well, you know, Harvey Weinstein. That's what he was all about. You know, that's what he was all about. So you have to excuse what he did because that's what Harvey Weinstein does. Well, I don't have to excuse Congress for being that way, do I? But that's accurate about Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> it, it's a hundred percent accurate. Well, what he did is exactly what he was. I mean, yeah. uh, where the dispute? Yeah. Mm. Where, where, uh, what I that, did, you know, what? that's the point we were making earlier, though, is that those things are, that is politics, but it doesn't have to be and it shouldn't be. And it is, you know, it is to me, it is just as much of a, you know, it is a clown move on his part, just as much as it is, in my opinion, mm -hmm. on, on the Democratic part to say, you know, we're going to hold up something we've wanted for 25 yeah. years. Yeah. One yeah. thing, but, because we can't get all five. But, but I'm sick of people want. going, you know, that, I mean, that's. It's just as stupid. Yeah, and a bunch I, of I, I'm sick of people MSNBC saying MSNBC watching yeah. liberals will call up here and argue with me about that. I don't fucking care because I'm not changing my mind. Yeah, well, I mean, the thing is that I I just think that when we we sit around and go, well, you know, that's what what do we expect? That's what politicians are. No, that's right. not. What, that may be what they are, but it's not what they're supposed to be. And what are we doing right. to stop them from being that way? Yeah, if maybe yeah. we should uh, demand a little bit uh, different, you know, but we don't. Yeah, and that goes for everybody. Yep. And that's because, you know, every year, uh, or, you know, every few years, we elect hundreds of these people. And out of the hundreds that we elect, yeah. we tend to only change out, you know, you know, three to five, something along those lines. Yeah. You know, if you don't count the ones who retired, it might be less than that. I mean, it's maybe, maybe it's the problem less than 10. Maybe the problem is that politics doesn't attract the highest form of human being. Well, it's you know? true. I mean, that, that you know that uh, uh, people are attracted to various professions based on certain criteria. And I think in the case of politicians, what, we, uh, uh, what we're offering them, we don't get the best, all right? We don't get people that are there for public service. And that's it, you know, really want to help people. They're there yeah. because they want power. I'm just, right, and, and I'm just saying that, that small bridge over the creek that you've been driving over mm -hmm. next to your house for mm -hmm. the last 10 years that's all fucked up and potholes everywhere and all that mm -hmm. i mean are, are you really willing to say okay i'm fine with it let's not fix it i don't want to fix it because i can't get national child care passed right okay right okay if i can't have the bridge and national child care then i don't want the bridge well, well then it, I, it, keep we, fucking driving so over it but I, shut I, the fuck up about i don't know who said it i in some comedian said it recently that uh oh, it was saturday night live they said you know the problem with the infrastructure bill is they keep saying we'll get to that bridge when we come to it if it's still yeah. there right. you know so anyway hey listen there's the theme song thank you all for joining me tonight i know that we have a bunch of people watching baseball out there, but at least Trucker Steve is watching it while we're doing the show, okay? Uh, uh, I don't know where Jeff was, uh, where he's been the last couple of nights, but I'm worried about him. Uh, but anyway, thank you very much, Kevin. I appreciate it. You guys kind of come in here and uh, you, uh, you come to my rescue. Trucker Steve, thank you for being here as well. Of course, uh, the ever-popular Josh, uh, thank you for... Uh, being with us, uh, 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 Tony, yeah, right, and of course the lovely and attractive uh, uh, Patrick. Patrick, thank you for being with us. Everybody, wave goodbye, and I'll wave goodbye back at you. And I'll probably be totally out of sync. Well, no, I'm not really out of sync. Oh, that's that's unusual. Okay, well, let me see here. Let me say goodbye to them because once I get rid of them, then I go completely into sync, and I'm just fine. Anyway, that's it for tonight. We'll be here. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do about next week. I might come on and just do two days next week, or I might come on uh, uh, Tuesday and try and do a show and see how it goes. And if I don't get too many people, then I won't do one Wednesday, and then I'll do one Thursday and Friday. But anyway, we'll, uh, I'll probably see you on Tuesday. Meanwhile, we'll see you on Monday for the pop-up show that we do at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, which is always a lot of fun. In the meantime, uh, if you're out there, uh, if you see her, tell her I love her, 
And by the way, make sure uh, you wear a mask, okay? And if you don't, please get vaccinated. Just let's get rid of this whole thing and get back to the way we were.